Evening, Andrea. Uh, nice to see people dropping in. Oh, 19 people already. Oh, Neil's here. Evening, Andrea. Uh, nice to see people dropping in. I just got I've decided it's a, a red wine night tonight. Oh, thanks, David. I keep trying. I keep changing the setup and trying to work out what's happening. Um, I discovered if I sit in weird positions, the focus goes in and out. So, hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, our regular Friday social. Um, I hope you are getting something out of these. I know I am. Um, it's uh, it's making me think about my tying a lot more and exactly the steps that I'm going through and, and why I'm doing certain things that you know you just tend to do and you never quite think about them. Um, so tonight, um, where it's all about these things here. So we're going to be, or I'm going to be looking at um, shrimps in their various guises um, and of course you see some amazing ones that are posted up in the groups and, and videos of them um, and they are very 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 um, beautiful but lots of people look at them and they get quite sort of daunted by them um, and one thing I'll say to you today is don't be um, you know you got to get out there um, and try stuff and I believe you me, the number of times I've tried tying various flies and it's all just gone to trash completely um, is nobody's business. I got a pot just behind me that's just full of dead flies, things that just never worked or I just didn't feel any confidence in. Um, so, um, you know, this one here um, is the first one we're going to have a look at today because this was a, um, a um, this was a uh, asked for last week in last week's session um by gary patterson i think i want to say um and uh and he asked if uh, we could tie the killer shrimp um and uh so here it is so we've got the killer shrimp um in all its glory um it's a big it's a big 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 chunky thing um and it's got a it's got a really cool name um this one um and I'll, it's it's almost like the um like the super villain of, of the shrimp in the invertebrate world um, so it's called the uh, Dicarogamorus villosus, um, and it's an invasive species in this country, um, and it's found in quite a few of our, our large um, uh, uh, reservoirs like Grafham, places like that. Um, and it's one of the reasons why um, the Angling Trust, uh, the Wild Trout Trust and all of those wonderful organisations are really hot on um, checking your equipment, cleaning it off making sure it's dried off properly before you move on to somewhere else okay so um so um this particular shrimp um the fish gorge on them and um i know that there's um quite a few people out there maybe some that are watching this that, that are international fly fishermen and can disappear off around the world um but one of the places i, I I'm very scared about going there, but what I'd love to go there is Lego Strobel in Patagonia, where you've got those these massive grow growing rainbow trout. You know, you know the average is about twenty pounds or something like that. Um, and one of the reasons why they grow to that size is because of shrimps, and because, um, they're they're just high energy and high protein packets, and they absolutely fundamentally gorge on them. So, you know, there's no surprise that where you get a lot of these, you get a lot of fish. And you get quite big fish. Um, and I was lucky enough to do a river fly survey over the last couple of seasons. And the number of them in the River Itchen and the Meon is phenomenal. 
absolutely phenomenal. Um, and, um, we, you know, we gave up counting after a while. You just have to estimate um, what you think is there. OK, um, so um, this particular pattern, um, very, very, I think it's quite straightforward to tie. Um, there's a few little intricate steps, um, but we're going to get straight into it. I'm going to going to start off with, again, one of my favourite my favorite uh, hooks. OK, the Fulling Mill, the FM50. I said last week that it's, uh, and the week before, that it's really versatile. Um, and I use it for, for anything that I can get away with, to be perfectly honest. Um, this is going to be a size 12 because the this particular shrimp is is big um, you can tie it smaller if you like um, but just so that we can see it tonight I'm gonna I'm gonna try and tie it as large as I can um, so I'm just gonna put it into my vice make sure it's nicely connected there we are so hopefully you can all see that um, and uh, I'm gonna use a, um, a red um, tying thread tonight um, it's red um, spider thread um, from Semperfly. Um, I like putting a little bit of red into it because it gives, particularly at the head, it gives a nice little hot spot. Um, and, but it also it allows me to see where the thread is at various stages. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gonna start. I'm going to start off right up to the eye on this one. I'm not even going to leave a space. And I'm just going to take my tying thread all the way down. Now you can count them if you like. You get a bit bored after a while. So I'm going to take it all the way down to pass the bend. I'm trying to keep touching turns on this nice bed of uh, bed of tying silk, tying thread. And I want it to be approximately in line or just above the point of the hook. That'll do. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to take a couple of turns further up and just hold and just pull off my tying thread so I'm not left a tag and then I'm going to work my way all the way back all the way back up to the eye but just stop about two or three millimeters from there now um, I like to put these nice little um, feelers and I'm going to use some partridge okay um, so this is a partridge neck you could use flank, um, they just have longer um, uh, barbules on them. And uh, and I'm going to just strip off the flue at the bottom so I'm left with a nice looking top part of a feather, like so. And because you don't want to be transferring parts of feathers all over the place, um, what I always try and do is make sure that for the front end, I'm going to take it from this side of the feather, from the right hand side, and from the rear, I'm going to take it from the left hand side and then I can also match up the amounts that I've got um, so I'm going to take a good sort of oh just under a centimeter maybe um, eight nine millimeters of partridge it doesn't matter if you've got lots of it but I'm just going to pull it out and I'm going to hold it out like that because I want all the points to be lined up if I can and I'm just going to grip it and pull it off and then I'm left with this nice upturned piece of partridge here so this partridge now I'm going to place just on the side and I'm going to use the tying silk to spin it onto the top of the hook now I want these front ones quite long because this particular shrimp has got really long front feelers and longer than you'd get on Gamerous Pulex, which would be the, the, the river, um, the naturalized river invertebrates. So I'm just gonna just gonna place that on. So I've got some nice long long feelers just at the front. And then I need a tapered body. So I'm just gonna come in with my scissors, cut it at 45 degrees, and I'm gonna take my silk or my tying thread back over there, just tidy it up a bit. And then take it all the way back down. There we go. There we go. So we're all in there. Now, um, I notice I haven't put any lead or anything in that at all. Okay. Um, because this ultimately, you're going to be, if you're on Grafham, you'd probably be from the bank fishing this. You want it to float up a little bit 
Um, you'd probably have it on a team with something a little bit heavier at the front, maybe two or three shrimps with it. Um, and it's, that foam's just going to keep it a little bit buoyant. Okay, so I'm going to take it down to just before the end here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to adjust. It's easier to do this. And I'm just going to show the end of my hook there. Um, and then I've got to try and figure out what I did with the partridge. There it is. Okay, so I'm going to take the left-hand side, matching amount. You can see why I took them from the two sides now. Matching amount, going to do exactly the same. I'm going to pull it out at a right angle and give it a little pull. There you go. Just position it. Put it where I think I would like it, around about there. And again, just place it on the side. Come over with my tie-in silk and just let my tie-in silk just pull it onto the top of the hook and then tie that down with some locking wraps and it's looking good um, and I'm just going to come in snip off these two early ends and then just come in like so just to tidy that up and now I can just return my hook back to its original position okay um so um yeah oh my pc just ran out. so I, i'm doing so just gonna have to restart my the laptop um so uh let me just have a look so uh the red tie and silk there david um purely because for the benefit of this demonstration i want you to be able to see it clearly um but also um it leaves a really nice red hot spot at the front and it's just another trigger point um, for the fish. Um, so I'm going to take this all the way down. Now it's at this point that I'm going to tie the foam body in. So the foam body, I've pre-made them. There they are. Okay, so it's a little bit piece of craft foam that I bought in Hobby Craft. It's a nice tan. I bought it um, to do daddy bodies as well. Um, and um, what I what I use for this. If I can just find it, I had it about two seconds ago. What I use here is um, a, uh, a Hopper um, Caddis Ant foam body cutter. Um, there it is, to cut them out. And I can do um, quite a few in the space of a couple of minutes, um, and I've got them ready. Um, this one particularly is made from uh, made by River Road Creations um, in Montana. Um, I think I got it from Uphaven um, uh, originally. Okay, um, so... Um, so with this particular, with this particular uh, piece of foam, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape the end. So I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to make a little V at the end with my scissors. I've got more than enough here to do what I wanted to do. I'll just make that a little bit bigger. That's better. That's better. And then I'm just going to trim off at the end bit by there. Now, this gives me a tying in point. So I'm going to take my tying thread all the way back down to here, right down to the end. And I'm going to take my, my foam and I'm just going to pinch it at the base. I'm going to bring my tying thread around and I'm going to trap it down couple of locking threads make sure that it's positioned where I want it to be there we go nice and tidy there okay um, and we'll uh, we've got that piece in and ready for us okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my tying thread back up now this is going to form the overbody I need an underbody on this I also need some sort of ribbing material and I'm going to do two things for the rib um, and I'll explain why I do this in a moment but the first thing I'm going to do and it seems really weird I'm going to make a loop with my thread here and I'm just going to tie that in so it's nice and secure and it's not going to go anywhere I'm going to take one of these uh, ubiquitous electricians clips and I'm just going to stick it on the end just to hold it down 
and then put it in my clip on the side so it's out of the way okay so the next the next little bit of ribbing well you can use anything for this to be honest um, uh, I'm going to use flexi floss um, I got this coral flexi floss I think I picked it up um, on a sale page for like one pound ten a, a packet so I bought loads um, as we do um, so I'm just going to take some of this and I'm going to bring my thread back and I'm going to tie this in but I'm going to do my usual thing I'm going to lift up pull it through and then I'm just going to run down get the foam out of the way just going to run back all the way back down with my tying thread and then back up to that point and then with my trusty scissors I'm going to pull my flexi floss if you remember from a couple of weeks ago and I'm just going to come in and nip that off and it pings back underneath the tying silk and doesn't leave any sort of step at that point now on this particular fly that actually wouldn't matter but inside me i'm a real stickler for, for it all looking good no matter which part of the fly um, i'm actually doing um, it's just part of part of my makeup um now um excuse me for a second my uh, my laptop just decided to reboot No, it doesn't want to do anything. Never mind. Um, so I've got I've got my two ribs all ready to go, and now I'm going to need to put in an underbody into this. Now um, you can use anything, any dubbing that you've got to hand. You can change the colours. Um, what I've used today is a mixture of um, Vicuna dubbing, Hairzier sub, um, and uh, the Tup sub um, from Vicuna, um, and I. Put it through my coffee grinder and I made up my own sort of little um, pink tinged hairsier dub quite fine which would uh, give me an opportunity um, to, to just add that little pink trigger to it um, and uh, and putting it through the coffee grinder also makes it that much finer as well so I'm just going to take takes a, a pinch of this and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wax my thread to find that the Vicuna is, is wonderful, it just needs a little bit of wax just to hold it on. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to dub on a nice little rope of dubbing. Don't want it too thick, don't want it too thin. There we go. I'm never going to get every, all, as much as I want on at this point, so I'm going to add some more on in a minute. Um, and the reason I'm doing it up is because it makes it easier just to position my my dubbing. If I'm doing it down here at the bottom, I've got to push it up and I find it bunches, whereas gravity here helps me out quite a lot. Um, so I'm now just going to build up my underbody. I don't want it too tight. I want it quite a little bit um, bushy. So I'm just going to tighten it just a little bit. And it doesn't matter if you go back over yourself either to so get there grab some more and I'm just gonna add some more dubbing I can if I can bring it all the way down Like so. Again, I'm just gonna build it up. Again, don't worry if you go back over yourself. I'm just touching it down just to make sure it's where I want it to be. I don't want to get too close to the eye. I've got to leave myself some space to tie down various materials and the foam in particular. Um, I'm just gonna bring it in and then just decide where it's gonna be like so. Okay. Now, apologies if I'm not answering any questions. Um, that uh, 
um, but my laptop has decided that it doesn't want to work at the moment so um, I can only just see things in a mirror that my phone screen is looking at so I do apologize um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rub the top because I want to get all those fibers as much as I can down on the side there we go more on that in a second now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my foam uh, strip I'm going to bring it across and I'm going to hold it quite taut and then I'm going to pinch grip it pinch grip my tie-in thread and just gently pull it down so it doesn't cut through one two three turns and we are developing the back of the shrimp at this point now this particular shrimp as well has um as you can see there this particular shrimp um also also has quite a pronounced front section so i'm going to deal with that in a bit so i'm just going to cut off the front straight and we'll deal with that in a second now this is where this first rib that we produced with our tie-in thread becomes really important um, the flexi floss is really stretchy so therefore it doesn't i find it doesn't bite into the foam particularly well and therefore doesn't give that much of a segmentation it gives a it gives a look but doesn't actually produce the segmentation so what i'm going to do with the with the thread is i'm going to use i'm going to pre-rib it with the thread first of all so here we go i'm just going to take that off there and bring it up a bit closer i'm going to pre pre-rib it so that I can start to make the segmentation and closer to the base to the tail I'm going to make them quite close together and as we move further up towards the head end I'm just going to widen out there we go just going to widen them out until we come in to the head and then I'm going to put a couple of locking wraps, locking turns in. There we go. A couple of locking turns. I can cut this bit off. Ooh, without cutting through. I'll make sure I don't cut through my tying thread. Done that on more than one occasion. Um, and you can see that we're now starting to get that nice segmentation. Shrimp-like segmentation. We're not there yet, though. Because this is where my flexi floss comes in so the flexi floss um, so I'm just gonna run my flexi floss exactly through the same tying points as the tying thread so you can see I'm starting to build up this coral pink segmentation and I'm not pulling it too tight because I want it quite thick because if I pull it tight the Flexi floss is going to narrow um, like any elastic does. I'm just going to bring that across a couple of turns and then just tie it off at the front. There we go. We're going to come in, pull the flexi floss tight. Just give it a little, a little nip like so. So there we have it so far. Okay. Um, so we're starting, you can see underneath, we're starting to develop um, it's quite nice shape and it's much more shrimpy now. Um, we're almost done. Um, so I'm just going to lift up. Yeah, you can see we're almost done. Um, I can build up this head area with my red thread. Just going over it one at a time. Here we go, nice and neat. So I've got this red hot spot just at the front. And now it's a case of just coming in with the whip finish tool. One, two, three, four. There we go. Gonna come in, just nip that off. And now we need to deal with this front foam piece because it doesn't quite look right yet. So um, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to treat it like I did with the back. I'm just going to cut a V shape. One, two, and then just cut across the top of that like so till I'm happy with it to form the head of the shrimp. So you can see that we've got it looking like this at this moment in time. Okay, I'm just going to see if I can get my laptop to... Well, this is booted up. Okay, so we got to this point. Sorry about that. Got to this point. Now, what I do have is I've got lots of bits of fibre just sticking out the top. So I'm going to trim those bits off. Don't want those. So I want all of the all of the material to be pointing down wherever possible. So in this case, just giving it a little bit of a haircut, um, like so. Um, and then coming in with a bit of Velcro, dubbing brush, whatever you've got. Just give it a little... Brush underneath just to tease out that dubbing, pull it forward. Definitely starting to look far more shrimp like. And what I did now is come in at 45 degrees, just trim these really long bits out. And there we have it now still needs an extra an extra layer and um, this is where my pot of sharpies comes in um, if you look at this particular shrimp um, under a microscope um, it's got a lot of barring on it so it, it, you could, so you could just leave it as it is um, but again fish are fun, funny aren't they um, they're looking for specific triggers so what I'm gonna do is just come in with my sharpie and i'm just gonna very gently put some barring on the sides and on the top not too much coming on the other side as well and there we have it we got our Graham Killer Shrimp uh, jumping out at us, and uh, they don't take too long, theoretically, to tie. Um, pretty quick. Um, what I am going to grab, though, uh, if I can find it, is just a little bit of head cement. I'm going to take my my dubbing needle. Don't seem to be any in there. I have to throw that one away. Um, that's better. That'll do. Yeah, that's right, Kieran. Is the fifty sixty five? I can see that one in my mirror. And I'm just going to bring in my head cement and just put it across the head here. across the front and it's all good and of course you can change the colors of, of the dubbing of the um, of the uh, of the foam of the flexi floss or whatever you don't have to use flexi floss you could use use whatever materials you've got um, but it makes for a, quite an interesting um, uh, shrimp um, that could take an awful lot of fish okay so I'm just gonna laptop is uh is rebooted so i'm just gonna come back in um so bear with me guys grab another drink um i'm gonna rejoin myself
There we go. Right. Okay. So, so yeah. Right. I've now got laptop back up. Um, so it closed all closed down on me unexpectedly. So I'm just uh, looking down through uh, through comments that people have put in. Um, uh, yeah, so Uphaven, thanks James for putting up the link there. Uphaven Fly Fishing, Fly Tying Tools, um, it's fantastic. Um, uh, yeah, George, <laughs> it's amazing where you find foam and various other things. Some of my kids' toys go mysteriously missing. Um, it's quite amusing. Um, yeah, range is a good place for foam, definitely. Um, I've got a hobby craft just down around the corner, so I would just walk in and when I can walk in. Um, uh, and yeah, permanent markers, Dan, definitely. So, uh, right, so Eric, uh, don't have any shrimp hooks of any sort to tie along with this week. Doesn't matter. Um, practice the techniques. You know, um, it, it doesn't have to be a curved hook, um, you can make it curved. Um, by adding an un more underbody and things like that um, but um, at, at the end of the day it's all about practice I've got shed loads of hooks here I just seem to have them coming out my ears um, so uh, so yeah just do that anything curved works exactly um, just having a look at what else people <laughs> people are writing because you've been busy um, yeah, exactly right. So Gareth has, has nailed that one as well. Um, you know, in terms of um, these particular shrimp at Grafham, um, you know, even just a straight nymph hook um, would be absolutely fine, would be absolutely fantastic. And you can see that was a lighter version and this one is a, is a much darker version. There it goes. But that's the killer shrimp. It's not too challenging. Not too difficult. Give it a go. There will be a step by step going up um, in the next uh, couple of days um, as we go as we go along. Um, so look out for that. OK, um, ooh, half an hour. Um, Andrea says Yorkie fur is great for dubbing. Yeah, I mean you've got three of them, Andrea. So I, I expect to see them all with hair and fur next time I see them. Um, yeah, Phil, cut mullet. Yeah, um, exactly right. Um, and I think it will, and that's something we need to explore come the summer, buddy, um, when we go out. Um, yeah, we're going to talk um, um, shrimp back and things like that on the next one, um, if, if you're not all asleep yet, and uh, you're all quite happy to, for me to go on and, and tie, a, tie another fly. Uh, Phil, I have a mark to take you to. Thank you, Phil. Um, so the next one we're going to tie, um, or I'm going to tie for, with you tonight, um, is this one. Okay, it's a, it's a much smaller um, shrimp. Um, and uh, it it's a very similar process, but using slightly different materials. Just to show you that you can get different effects with different things. Um, and uh, this one is my, my uh, chalk stream nymph. Um, I'll just change up the colours. Um, and uh, it works exceptionally well um, on the river itching um, and I've caught one or two on the on the meal with it as well um, so um, we're gonna start off with this one um, I'm gonna go down a size I think um, with my hook here um, again I'm gonna go for my my trusty fully mill 5065s okay here um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and I'm gonna go down to a size 14 on this um, just because I think it works really well, um, and uh, and again there'll be a step by step that will go up, and a tying video on the on my YouTube channel if anybody's found that yet. Um, Lost Lake Fly Tying um, Fly Club is up there. Um, have a look. Um, so there she is. Just going to put her in. Um, now for this one, I am going to put lead underbody in. Um, I'm going to use extra fine um, Vineyards lead. There it is. Um, often I'll use flat lead. Adhesive flat lead, and put multiple layers on. But for this one, I'm just going to use um, use a single layer of lead. I don't want it to plummet to the bottom. I want it to actually float down quite naturally. 
um, when it's cast upstream. Um, and how many turns is down to you. So obviously the more turns of lead you put on, the heavier it's going to be. Um, so you could just have a couple, you could have more if you wanted it to be sitting in the in different areas of the water column. Um, so I'm not even going to use any um, uh, glue on this one um, to stick it down because invariably I end up sticking my fingers to everything. So um, I learned a long time ago that unless I need to use it, I'm not going to. So I'm not going to use it this time. So I'm going to come in with my uh, with my lead and I'm literally I'm going to start at the towards the bend end. And I'm just going to put a load of turns on this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten to start. And then I'm just going to bunch them up. And then we're going to go 11, 12, 13, 14, and one more, 15. There you go. So 15. So it's nicely positioned so around just around this uh, this hard stop end point and, and about... Um, what three mils from the uh, from the eye, and I'm just going to use my thumbnail to nip off the lead. I tend not to use scissors for this because it leaves quite a large tag end, and then you, it's a pain to actually get back in there and push down. Now, what I then try and do is make sure that where I can is I, I just rotate the lead so that those tag ends are facing down and not facing up. Because otherwise they splay out when you put your tie-in thread on. Okay, so um, for this particular this particular one, um, I'm going to use, um, well, I was going to use brown. I'll go back to using the red because it's all come out. So I'm going to back, back to use my red spider thread. Um, is that a nice Rioja? <laughs> no, it's not, actually. Um, it's a Pinot Noir. Um, it's a, I decided to go light tonight. Um, but um, normally it'd be a Malbec, so um, but no, it's Pinot, Pinot Noir tonight, right? Okay, so that's our lead underbody on. Now I've got it positioned in that in that plane, so that when it sinks, it it sinks it sinks in this plane rather than down or that way. I want it to to come in and just continue to float down. Um, it's a it's deadly for grayling, so if you're interested in going grayling fishing, um, shrimps, um, the grayling are looking for these all the time. Now I'm just going to tie on again, right at the right at the eye, and now I want to go over that lead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my thumbnail, my fingernail. Sorry, I'm just going to push the lead so that it butts up against this little dam of thread that I've put in. And then I've got my tag end here. I'm going to hold it very tight across the, the lead. And then I'm just going to run my tie-in thread down the lead. There we go. Until I get down to my point at which I want to finish, which is about about there, not all the way around. And then I'm going to come all the way back up and I'm going to start to build a little dam just here to stop it moving. And then I'm just going to go back over very gently. You don't want to pull too hard on the lead. It's very soft. If you pull too hard, um, you can cut through it and back again and finish there. So yet again, I've got my tag end, just pull it off. It comes. Okay. Um, so we've got some, got some, a nice underbody there. I've now got my uh, basic um, uh, thread underbody as well. I'm going to go back to the partridge. I'm going to get another feather. Um, this is where it becomes really useful if you've got one of those bags where you've got some dodgy feathers that you're thinking, I don't know what to use those for. Keep hold of them because they they're really useful for making legs on things on nymphs and, and feeders on shrimps. So yet again, taking my partridge. Okay, this is a, this is grey partridge. Um, I do have a really nice Hungarian partridge skin um, in my in my collection that I picked up from an Orvis sale for four pounds reduced from fifty. Um, and it is yeah, man, I've not, I haven't come across partridge like it since. 
if you try getting hold of the Hungarian partridge skin. Uh, they don't do them anymore, which is really frustrating. So, based on my observation on the River Mion, okay, I'm going to bring the feelers, and I'm not going to have them as long as the killer shrimp. See them there we go. I'm going to bring that back. And then I'm going to come in with my scissors and trim. Like so. And then just taper it out a bit. And then come all the way down to the end here. And again, I'm going to reposition my hook. Take hold of my my partridge. I made a bit of a mess of this for this feather that time. Didn't know my own strength, so I'm going to come in with my scissors and just trim it. And I've got my ends. I just need to position them where I want them on the side and allow my thread to bring them over onto the top. And then I can give them a little pull just to shorten them. And in those split seconds, the fish have got to, to size up something that's floating down towards them. And go, right, that's something I'm going to eat. I do think that these particularly natural trigger points like the feelers and, and, and wispy legs and things, they actually do make a significant difference. Um, got no empirical evidence of that, apart from I catch fish. But I'm just going to build this up like so. And then reposition again. Like so. Okay. I don't think I want to I want to read any of these comments. I'm, I'm going to ignore them now. Now, um, I've got loads of different... Um, uh, types of nymph skin and, and shrimp back and all those sorts of things mainly from late night um, searching on the internet and pressing buttons when I shouldn't and suddenly finding packages arrive the following couple of days um, but um, you know I've messed around with all mm, got red wine on that messed around with some weird stuff um, like this um, UV chewy skin um, it's really dodgy weird stuff this is really thick um, but it stretches really well um, so I have been playing around with that on uh, on some shrimp backs. Um, it seems to work quite well. Um, and then you can you can pick up um, uh, shell backs in various colours. This is a hen shell back. Um, it's quite nice. It's not stretchy though, um, and I quite like a little bit of stretch in it. Um, and the one that I'm going to use tonight is um, is uh, ooh, is this magic shrimp foil. Okay, and this is uh, uh, from a Czech company. Um, I think you pronounce it semen. Um, <laughs> I hope not. Um, it might be Simon, something like that. It's in the Czech Republic. OK, but it's magic shrimp foil. Now, it's already pre-cut into strips, which is cool. Um, so you don't have to mess around with that. And there it is. Um, and it's quite stretchy. Look. What it's also got is it's got a dull side, a matte side, and it's also got a shiny side. So depending on what effect you want, you can swap the sides for this. You can see that it stretches really well over this. Okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the um, put the shiny side up. But what I'm gonna do first of all is cut a little arrow shape at the end. Let's even those up, Roberts. Come on. There we go. And. I want the shiny side up, so I'm going to have the, the, the matte side facing me. And I'm going to place it on the top and bring it down. And then literally just going to catch it in with my thread on the top. And then come down, making sure that I'm not folding it as I'm tying it down. I'm bringing it down. And then I've got it tied in. So there it is. 
that's going to be my that's going to be my shrimp back. Okay, so I'm just going to tuck that out of the way because I'm going to come back to that in a bit. Now we're going to do exactly the same as I did on the other one. Um, so for a guideline, um, I'm going to make a loop with my thread. I'm going to use this as my ribbing guide. I'm just going to tie that in and then tuck this away as well. So I'm going to come back to that in a bit. Okay. So I'm just going to stop and have a drink. Okay, so let's have a look and see what um, if there's any questions that have come up. Okay, uh, let's have a look. Let's go all the way back. Uh, yeah, old rubber gloves, um, you know, um, uh, medical gloves, things like that. I've got loads of those. Um, Uh, yeah, resin's going to be there soon. Okay, I'm having technical issues with the computer tonight, but never mind. Um, <laughs> okay, so anyway, can't see any questions, so I'll come back to that. Right, so at this point now, I need my main rib. So I'm going to come in with some, um, some tippet, actually. I'm going to use um, uh, uh, this always super strong um, 3x tippet. Uh, why? Because it's an old one that's probably at the end of its life. Um, and um, I've got to use it for something. Rather than just chuck it, because that's not very good for the environment. So I'm going to take a piece of this. And I'm going to use this as my main, as my main rib. So what I'm going to do with this piece is... I'm going to tie it in, but to do that, it's too rounded. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to nibble it. To flatten it out. There it is. So that when I tie it in, it bites in. Excuse the pun. It bites in to the th the, uh, the nylon really, really well. And now I can bring my tying thread back up. I'm going to reposition again. There we go. Bring my tying thread back up. There we go. So I've got lots of material waiting now to, to go into the positions that it should, that they need to go in. So one of the, one of the things I found with flight, I don't know about you guys, is that is that getting things tied in at the right times just makes such a big difference to 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 how you tie patterns. Um, so now we need the underbody. Um, so that's going to form our leggy sections. So I could use the same stuff as I used earlier. Could do that. I'm not going to on this one. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go for this one because uh, I just I just like it. Um, it's going to be grey, um, so I'm going to go for this uh, Nature Spirit Snowshoe Rabbit Foot Dubbing in Muskrat Grey. Um, mainly because I haven't really used it very much and I just thought, well, I've got to use it on something. Um, but it's really, really, really fine. And it's really soft and I really like it. So again, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to form a dubbing rope. Again, I'm going to let gravity do its job for me. So as I as I wind it on, it's going to push it down. And I'm not too worried about it being thick and bulky because actually that that works in our favour. Works in our favour. And then I'm going to wind it back down to the base to start, and then I'm going to bring it up and cover all. Of that lead there we go I'm not being overly delicate with it don't need to be on this one um, 
and I'm not taking it right up to the end again because I need some space to tie everything in. So I'm gonna bring it in up to that point there. There we go. You can see that it's all looking um, particularly fluffy and and, uh, and buggy-like. So I'm just gonna bring down bits from there and I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna come in gently and give it a little haircut across the top. Just literally, because otherwise those little bits of fur just stick out at weird angles and you'll look at it and go, I don't like that. So better to spend your time giving it a haircut now. Then you have to go back later on when it's a little bit too late. So I'm just going to There we go. You don't need to rush anything. Get it to where you want it to be. And there we go. So I've, just got, I've got these bits sticking out here. That's exactly what I want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, take my uh, magic shrimp foil. It's nice and stretchy. Um, and I'm going to bring it across, making sure it goes down on either side. It's very easy now for it to slip either side. Um, so be very careful where you're positioning it. Um, and I'm going to hold it like so. I'm just going to put a lock in turn at the eye and then put a second one in and just check the position that it's covering everything I want it to cover. There we go. And then I'm just going to, just for safety sake, one, I'm going to put two more in and then I'm going to pull because it's stretchy again and give it a little trim and it tidies up really nicely. And then I can put in a couple of turns just there, just to trap it all down. So there we go. We've got a nice shrimp back there. Now you can do these, you can take these down to size 18s. Um, you, know, the, you know, very heavy, very small, um, can be absolutely um, game changers. Um, now what I'm gonna do is gonna take my tie and thread rib this is the work the one that I'm going to use to uh, to guide me and to to push down into the shrimp. I'm just going to bring it across and underneath, and then as before, I'm just going to trap it down with close turns towards the base of the shrimp, and then as we move further up I'm just going to make them a bit wider to give that classic segmentation of the gamerous until I get all the way up to the top and then I can tie it off so two turns remember less is more third one there come in snip okay so we've got our segmentation now that is starting to really differentiate the creature. And now for protection, because this is what the mono is going to do, um, I'm now going to do exactly the same with the mono. I'm going to follow the lines that I took with the red tying thread. What you'll find with the mono as well is that because it's clear, the red tying thread just pings through it. Make sure it's where you want it to be. Don't rush it. Bring it in. So you're adding more segmentation. But also adding a bit of extra protection for your fly. Because I said it time and again, I want my flies to take multiple fish. Um, to be reusable. Because as we know, they're not cheap to tie. I'm going to come in. Just nip off the mono. I'm going to keep the head quite small on this one. So I just now need to tidy up just at this point. There we go. We're almost there. I'm just going to take my whip finish tool. And then come in. 
and just push and remove that section. Now it's not quite finished yet. Um, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a brush with my dubbing brush, my homemade dubbing brush, just to draw out all those fibres so that they look more leggy. Just pull them. There we go. Now they're going to be shorter at this end than this end in the natural animal natural creature so I'm just gonna come in give them a little trim like so there we go and you could leave it like that yeah again you know we've got nice little grayish um, natural shrimp um, but I'm gonna come in this time and I'm gonna add some color to it so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, uh, one of these um, so this is a Windsor and Newton Pro marker um, this one is in rose pink so it's not a, a real vivid pink. Um, it just gives a uh, a little glow to the surface, the upper surface of the skin. So I'm just going to colour that in. And the good thing about these Pro markers is they got this big thick chisel tip, but then at the other end they got this really fine tip, so that you can come in. And just finish off where you might have missed some. You can see that we start to get this little pink shell back on the back of it. And then, well, it wouldn't be a shrimp if I didn't um, do exactly what Dave wants me to do, which is get the resin out. Um, so at this point, Going to use a little bit of resin, so uh, Golf Classic, uh, Thin Man. Um, I haven't got any Thin Man at the moment, um, but Golf Classic will do. I don't want a lot of this, um, and I'm going to use I'm going to use a needle um, for this one. I'm just going to take take my resin, and I'm just going to apply it to the tip of my needle, like so. And I don't want a lot. I can always add more. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it in the center of the shell back. I only want it to be on the shell back. So I'm just going to stroke it along the shell back. And this is why you don't want all those fibers sticking out the top because it just becomes an absolute nightmare. I need a little bit more. Remember, you can always add more. Oops, give you that bubble. You can always add more, it's just harder to take it away. Here we go, and I'm just going to finish it off down at this end, just need a bit more light on this end. There we go, and just take your time, you know, there's no need to rush, gonna add those in. Like so, I'm going to come in my UV torch and, uh, and I'm just going to give it a blast. And you can see that we've got this rosy pink shrimp here. Now you can make the, uh, the shrimp a bit more pronounced, the, uh, the hump of the shrimp if you like. Just take a little bit more resin into the center just build up a second layer don't take it all the way but just build it up into that middle section there I guess give it a blast and there we have it and we've got our itching shrimp which you can make in uh, in all sorts of colours. Um, you could put a, uh, a uh, an extra shell back across there of, of, of peacock mirage tinsel as well, um, just to add that add that extra little zing to it. Um, and I do also at this point like if I can find it, 
um, adding in a layer, a little layer of uh, Sally Hansen. Um, this is an old bottle, it's gone all thick and gooey. I'm not going to use that. Um, get rid of that. Uh, oh, there it is, it's fallen over. So I'm just going to use. That's it, a newer bottle. It's not as thick. Get rid of most of it and just put a final layer of Sally Hansen across the top. It's a bit of a throwback to using all sorts of different um, different resins. Um, Golf, I find cues rock hard. Um, limited if no tack, whereas quite a few of the others um, you know, I, I find that they become very tacky and, and, and they stick to things in your box and stuff. So putting it on the extra layer of Sally Hansen just gets rid of that tackiness on there. So there we have it. So we've got two shrimps um, that we tied tonight. There we go. So we've got the killer shrimp, um, which I'll just put behind it for, there you go, or just above it. So we've got our killer shrimp. There it is, our killer shrimp. Um, and our itching shrimp. Okay, so two lovely, lovely little shrimps. And the key thing is, is the techniques there. Um, you can transfer to tie any shrimp pattern. Um, you know, um, I've got another one uh, that I did a little bit earlier on. Not 100% happy with this one. Um, I was just playing around. Um, but just another type of shrimp. Um, and this one has got a full shell back built up of le resin layers. Um, uh, and it's got a, a little spiral, um, spring-like spiral of uh, of wire as a as a as a back running across the top as well, um, and uh, it takes a while for that one to uh, to build that one up. But it's also got um, some legs here that I've added in of um, of uh, uh, straggle legs, uh, simplified straggle legs. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed those. Let's just have a look and see what people have uh, what you've been talking about i've seen all sorts of things floating on there today um so oh i can actually move it now so uh so george yep yeah, Yeah, those, yeah, Dave, those markers, I, I, I just ordered them off Amazon, to be honest. <laughs> they were cheaper. Um, just ordered them off Amazon. Um, they come in a variety of, uh, of, of different, um, different colours. Um, they got this uh, lime green one, which is really nice, um, which I use a lot of. Um, uh, blues, indios, things like that. They're really good for colouring um, uh, white tying thread. So if you want a particular colour... So, for instance, when I'm tying Kites Imperials and I want and I haven't quite got the purple um, silk that I really should use for those um, to make them ping, um, I'll, I'll colour my tying thread um, using those markers. Oh yeah, so Scott, sorry, uh, 3x, 4x, and James, thank you James for that. In simple terms, the bigger the x number, the finer the diameter. So when you get up to 6, 7, uh, 8x, it's really fine um, diametered uh, um, uh, um, copolymer or fluorocarbon. Um, and as you get down into the 1x's and the zeros, um, it's much, much thicker. Um, so, right, so, uh, I don't think we got... Ooh, new comments. So yeah, see you, Eric. Um, and uh, yep, yeah, Kieran, you can blend the markers. That's great. Um, <laughs> Dave went a bit mad with red and pink. I'd like to see that. Um, thanks, Phil. Excellent ties. Great. Thank you very much. Um, don't forget, guys, um, that um, we're going to be working hard in the background to put up some step by steps um, for all of these. 
um, so that you can have a go. I'll make them as, try and make them as simple as I can. I hope that you've uh, had a look at them and been able to, to have a play. Um, but also we'll, um, I'll do some tying videos over the next uh, day or so um, so that we can, you can actually see them. You can actually pause and go back and look at the different, uh, different ideas. Plus also the camera will be able to focus that much closer. Um, so try these out. Um, still waters, they'll still work on still waters. Just because the shrimp is a river, it's a river pattern, doesn't mean that you shouldn't, uh, shouldn't, um, could be used great as a stalking bug. Um, just flicking it into the margins. Um, great. Um, you know, um, Eric, I think you're off to, if you're still there, you're off to me on, um, on the catch and release, um, flicked out left on the bottom and just, just giving a little twitch up and then they'll drop again and they'll pick it up from the bottom. Um, and, uh, and, and it, uh, it, it, it's quite a, an exciting way of fishing there. Um, so <laughs> Dave's created a resin under, is that on you, Dave, or is that, um, is that on the fly? Inquiring minds would like to know on that one, um, buddy. Um, uh, so, um, any um, requests for the next uh, next tying session? I think Scott, you mentioned about um, wings and winging flies and things like that. So that one's coming. Um, and uh, and um, but if you want to see anything else, um, let me know um, and we can build it in. Um, I'm going to be investigating over the next couple of weeks tying some massive pike flies. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but also my saltwater patterns um, for for next year. Um, so. Uh, Phil, yep, yeah, Clinks. You said that last week, so yeah, Clinks definitely on the list for you, Phil. Um, and uh, um... <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, well, I'll definitely tie those. Um, so, um, oh, slip wings. Oh, thanks, dude. Um, yeah, we can do those. Um, um, yep, yeah, get some. I think I got some starling here somewhere. Um, so we can have a play with those on some nice dries. Um, and, uh, and I've already got my, um, you saw these, I posted these the other day, um, my, uh, hen pheasant pairs, um, for doing, um, paired wings on, on, on traditional wets. Um, but these are fantastic as well. Um, so hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go now cause I'm a bit tired and I've got the rest of this bottle of wine to, uh, to nail. Um, and, uh, and. I'll see you all hopefully next week. Um, spread the word, get people out there. Um, I'm doing this because ultimately I want more people to be tying flies. That's what it's all about. Um, so uh, uh, Gareth, yet yeah, dial bass. I've not, I, I haven't demonstrated dial bass yet, but we can do that. Um, and yet yeah, rolling them for the Invicta, but it's just not as good for if you roll them on the Invicta, James. Oh man, you have got to pair them up. It just gives that beautiful taper across the top um right then guys um so i'm going um enjoy we'll it's here for you to look at more and more we'll stick it up on the youtube channel as well um with the step by steps and the uh, and the time videos um and uh, i'll see you all again next week take care bye bye